Hi, my name is Janiel. Welcome to Culture Trekking, where I try to collect unique stories from around the globe that focus on sustainable adventure and cultural connections. I call Utah home, but today I am taking you to the crypts of Vilnius Cathedral in Lithuania. So we just arrived in Lithuania and they, you have to have a passenger locator form, your vaccine card, or you go into quarantine. They do check, so make sure you fill it out before you come. Just gonna go pick up my luggage and then figure out how to get into the city. There are a few things that you should know when visiting Vilnius, Lithuania. AT&T service is crap. T-Mobile service works fine. If you are there with T-Mobile and have access to Wi-Fi, I would recommend downloading the Traffy app. It will give you access to the bus routes and how to get to and from hotels and other destinations. If you don't have Wi-Fi, then use the airport's um, Wi-Fi to download the Bolt app or download it before you go. That is like their Uber. Even though Uber is available, it's just not as abundantly available to get a ride. All right, well, check-in was pretty easy and they do ask for the vaccine card and they do check the dates and every juncture that I've come to, everybody checks the dates. So make sure you have your vaccine card. Do not lose it. Um, I will link down below the passport holder that also has a vaccination card holder. Down below, it has a pen and everything that you're gonna need in it. But let me show you my room. This is room 101 at the Rotunda, Rotunda Centrum Hotel. It's a little ways out from Old Town, but I found it to be a bit cheaper and very cozy. So here's the entrance and then it's real small. You just come in, there's the bed. And then they have a desk, a TV, phone, little mini bar, closet with a robe. Let's see what's, in, oh, they have a safe. The bathroom to figure out, turn the lights on. It's always fun trying to figure this stuff out when you're in a new country, right? On the lights! There's the bathroom. So, I had a kid sitting behind me on the airplane. Bless his parents' heart, but he was kicking my seat the whole time. So I got very little sleep on the way over here. I am super jet lagged. I'm gonna go meet up with some other travel buddies uh, later this evening. So I'm gonna freshen up for just a minute, maybe lay down, I don't know, that's kind of a gamble, especially with jet lag. I try to stay awake as soon as I get here just because it helps me sleep and fight the jet lag. Give me a minute. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'll see you guys in a bit. So this is Vilnius Cathedral. It was built in 1387 and it was burned down and rebuilt several times. But we're gonna go inside and look at the crypts that are beneath the cathedral. So in the crypts, that's where you're gonna find some of the royal um, entombments and things like that. Hi. One for the English tour? Okay. Yep. During the Soviet regime, the cathedral was actually converted into a warehouse. It wasn't until 1989 that the gallery of the images and statues and status of the cathedral was actually restored. The saints of the cathedral are St. Stanislaus and Ladislaus, and is the heart of the Catholic spiritual life in Lithuania. Don't mind the dragons, of course, these are for kids, but uh, all the other information is accurate. So the history begins here in 14th century. In 14th century, we had the first Catholic church built here. And this church was not built in an empty place, but we don't know who built the building before that. Were they pagan people? Were they just uh, craftsmen? We don't know anything about that. We know that 
in 14th century, Lithuania was Christianized because it was the last pagan state in, in uh, Europe. And uh, then uh, Yagaila, who was uh, Lithuanian Polish ruler, uh, Pol Lithuanian Grand Duke and Polish king, he Christianized Lithuania and built this church. It was a simple, humble church. And uh, as you can see, we had a river here. Now we have their um, white street and also this tower. It's the, sa the same tower that we have now, only it's bigger, wider. Uh, this was a defensive tower back then. It was connected with the defensive wall of the castle. Near the cathedral, near the church, we, uh, even in 14th century, we had upper castle. So Gediminas tower, we still have one tower left. So these towers are actually twins, you can say so. Uh, and then later in 18, no, in 16th century, we had lower castle built, a royal palace, it's reconstructed now. So in the same place, so two castles, one cathedral and church, uh, of course, this place needed protection. That's why we had defensive towers. We had more of those, maybe 10, maybe 8. 16th century, 17th century, they were destroyed because uh, the, the wall was no longer needed. And this one changed its function to the bell tower. That's why we still have it. The main pool, the way it tickets is 14th century then we have 16th century and this uh, the whole tower was formed in 18th century so because it's different <laughs> yeah uh, this cathedral it was built in 15th century so it, it changed quite a bit 14th century church and then 15th century cathedral seven other rooms like this maybe so, and water collect uh, some places that we could visit but in this tour we will uh, see maybe one third of all the basements but the most important part we are near the secret royal crypt this is a model of a crypt we won't go inside uh, there's no bones no relics now only these wooden constructions these are important because only from those researchers could say when this crypt was made in 16th century we had buried here in these uh, three royals it was uh, two queens and one king, King Alexander, uh, Queen Barbara Radjivil, Queen Elizabeth of Habsburg. It was one of the most important royal families in Europe, so Austria-Hungary Empire, uh, Holy Roman Empire, all connected with the same family. And Barbara, who is depicted here, was the second wife. So Elizabeth, Barbara, and then Catherine, who is not buried. But what happened, all the Habsburg ladies, we don't know anything about, like, uh, as a country. <laughs> as, as, for example, uh, just little children don't know anything about Elizabeth, Catherine, nothing. They all know Barbara Rajivil. Rajivil family was our Grand Duke family, noble family, really influential. They are still alive. They are mostly living in Poland, in, in Belgium, in France, and uh, they are Grand Dukes. <laughs> yeah, so but they were not royal family, meaning that this Barbara married a king, they married from love. That's, uh, that's why it's our kind of Romeo and Juliet story, because love is involved and also death is involved because she died quite young. She was 31 years old when she died and people always speculated what happened, actually, because uh, some people, uh, Barbara's family, they thought that maybe uh, Zygmunt Augustus' mother, Bona Sforza, she maybe poisoned Barbara because in 16th century poison was quite a, a usual way to get rid of your political enemies, but it wasn't the case. Uh, actually, we know that uh, 20 years ago Barbara's coffin was uh, uh, opened and now we know that actually she had ovarian cancer. 19th century picture, we have here 16th century picture, so Barbara Elizabeth. The two queens uh, that were buried here, and uh, 20 years ago we also made a sculpture uh, out of her skull. Because why it's important? In all historical sources, uh, people always uh, mentioning her teeth. She had all teeth. That's what she they say. So she was beautiful. She married a king. She married from love. That's why it's important. There are 27 crypts in the Vilnius Cathedral, but only 20 of them have been explored. This is a newly made sarcophagi, while from the 1930s, they're hoping to find the bones of King Vitatis and put them in their rightfully restored place under the cathedral.
that easy to see the fresco in, in the crypt. It's one of the two oldest frescoes in Lithuania, dating back to the very beginning of 15th century. It dates back to Vitutas times, that's why we searched for Vitutas in this very crypt for the last time. We found nothing, unfortunately, but still, it was this fresco was a marking of a Catholic grave. That's why we think that it could be that some nobleman, some royals were buried here. Why it's interesting for the specialists? Because this is a Catholic fresco, depicting Jesus, St. Mary, St. John the Evangelist, but uh, it was painted as in a in kind of manner that we usually Orthodox would paint their icons. So maybe the painter was used painting icons, Orthodox icons, in, in a Byzantine tradition. So in one painting we have, uh, as it usually happens in Lithuania in Catholic art, that we have two traditions clashing, so Catholic and Orthodox one. Because for example, even St. Mary in Catholic tradition she is usually depicted with a blue gown. This is the 15th century fresco she was talking about. Because they were still excavating, you can only view it through a glass reflection at this point. And if you, we would like to reach those uh, mass graves, those uh, two cemetery uh, crypts that we still have, we would go, have to go through a crypt. Uh, near the fresco, we would go to the right, and there we have iron door, and then we would crawl to those crypts. So it's like right here somewhere that we will investigate this year. Now, uh, one by one, you can take a look to the... They would usually fend the chapel in the first floor, a uh, chapel with all those uh, beautiful religious items, altar, etc., but also all the plates, usually in Latin or, or, or Polish, uh, with names of the people that would be buried here. So crypts are usually really uh, humble, just a simple place uh, with no decorations, because they won't usually be visited crypts. Uh, some people would die, they would be brought here, and then this entrance, that's why it's so low. As the church was rebuilt so many times, we don't actually have a uh, chapel here, we have a side entrance. And we have in total now uh, 11 chapels in, in the cathedral, and only two of those chapels didn't change its, its place. The last architect, classical architect, Lorinos Gusevichus, he really minded symmetry, so he pushed a lot of inner walls of the chapels. That's why they got lost, and it's of course a headache for um, for historians, because we don't know who owned this script. We, we have a hint, but we don't know exactly. And these uh, iron blocks, iron and cement blocks, these are not connected with crypts. With burying people know it's connected with the same period of the flood. So uh, these uh, are pillars that uh, go back, go to the other side for a few meters and go down up, at, up to 10 meters. So they constructed um, uh, these all around the perimeter of the cathedral and now it's, it holds, uh, this construction holds uh, the cathedral, the, the, base, uh, the basement, the building, uh, everything. And now we can come back. Then it was off to a Georgian restaurant to try some delicious food. This is a kinkali. The traditional way of eating it is to grab it by the knot and then bite in the middle, suck out all of the juices, and then you can eat it. Of course, while in Lithuania, you can never pass up some good meat and potatoes. So I just got back from dinner and I'm somebody that likes to fall asleep to movies because it helps me relax. I'm here in Lithuania and typically you can't get like your favorite shows or anything when you are traveling, but I'm gonna show you a trick. So I'm here in my hotel room and I signed up for this thing called Surfshark. And what it does is that you can pick the VPN of where your location you want to be from and then you can access through whatever Wi-Fi you're connected to that is safe and secure any of the shows that you can you watch at home. It's rainy and it's dark and I just want to relax because it was a hectic flight and um, watch 
a show and kind of get my zen back so I can attack tomorrow and see all of the great sights here in Vilnius. I really like Surfshark because it helps me feel protected. I've had my identity stolen actually twice now. I was part of the the government thing where some people broke in and my information was some that was affected. So having Surfshark, being able to access movies that help me fall asleep in is kind of like a self-care thing is really important. So I will link Surfshark down below. And be prepared for my next video for more food, fun, new friends, and fabulous sights. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thanks so much. See you in the next one, y'all. Bye.